Welcome back. On this episode of Rad BMX Builds, we got a brand new bike. We're going to do an unboxing of this GT Performer with a coin roll, and then we're going to discuss some of the custom stuff that we're going to do to this build. I'm really excited about this one. I've been waiting and waiting for it to show up. It finally came today after a small delay, but it's here. I've been collecting parts for a while. I've been holding on to some parts, waiting for a bike like this to come along. And I've been wanting to do one in this color, which I'm getting ready to reveal shortly. I got all the packaging off of the bike. It appears to be a 1992 GT Performer. Uh, all in all, it's in really good shape. What we're gonna do with this bike, drop it off at my powder coater, have him do the forks, the frame, the bars, and the seat post, and some other parts that I've been saving up in a lavender purple color. And I'll explain that a little bit as soon as I show you the decals. Uh, freestyle forks, like I said, the gyro is junk, I'm gonna take that off. Crank set, uh, you can probably clean that up, but I'm not gonna be using that. I got a different crank set that I'll be going over. But all I wanted from this really were the main components, bars, forks, frame, seat post, seat. Pedals are a bonus. I don't care about the stem, I'm not gonna be using that. I'm not gonna be using the seat post clamp either, so that stuff will all be stripped off the bike prior to me bringing it over to powder coat. As you can tell, got a little bit of surface rust. Cranks are a little worse. Paint's not bad, uh, chipped up, but all surface stuff, again, with powder coating, that's gonna not be an issue. The only concerns I have are the top of the bars here. You can see some of the dents. So, you gonna see what I can do about uh, filling that in, getting it fixed, fixing it the right way, and see if that's something uh, I can use or get something different. But 92 Performer in pretty good shape. I'm in love with the coin roll frames. I love the bend back here. Great frame, good platform. And they do really well for resale. If you find yourself uh, one of these on a good deal, I recommend picking it up. And after doing a simple look over, oh, it's in pretty good shape. It needs a lot of work. So I've decided I'm not going to keep the headset, the gyro, the bottom bracket. I'm not going to use the cranks or sprocket, I'm purely just gonna keep the frame, forks, bars, seat post, and seat. And that's about it. All the other components will be replaced with reproduction or refurbished old school parts. I am gonna take this apart and you're gonna go with me to the powder coater. We're gonna drop it off there and I'll show you the color and a little bit of that process. So let's jump in and get this thing taken apart. We've got the headset out there's a couple things I wanted to show you I've taken apart the gyro and a few of the pieces here are the cup and the flat piece that the cables connect to these are important to hang on to because these you can restore you can paint them I like to have them powder coated in my opinion powder coating is so much better than any paint you're gonna find I don't recommend paint paint soft paint chips paint scratches Yes, most of these bikes were painted back in the day and that's the original way of doing it, but with evolution, things change and get better and powder coating is just simply better. I also have a really good powder coater that I'm happy with, so I'm more than comfortable taking these parts to them to get powder coated and they do a lot of bikes, so they know not to do too heavy on threads or over stamps or serial numbers. So powder coating for me is the only way that I go. So I hang on to these and I might use them on another build. I already have a gyro set for this bike. So these are just gonna go into a uh, part bend that I have for future builds and then where I can use these. 
Now we take a look at the frame here. We've taken out the bottom bracket, the cranks and all that. We've taken off the seat post seat and we've taken out the whole headset and gyro system. So this frame is now ready for powder coat. There's no more cups, there's no more anything on it, it's just a bare frame. We'll take this along with the other parts and they will sandblast it down and prep it for powder coat. Let's go ahead and get the bars and seat and seat post and get those ready as well. What we have is the GT Performer bars that came on that bike. The grips on it are aftermarket. They didn't come on this bike. They're made by Specialized. And I'm sure like most kids, they went through them and just found a pair of grips. Just take an X-Acto knife and we're just gonna cut these right off. I'm not worried about the chrome finish or anything about these bars because they are going to go to powder coat and they'll look brand new when we get them back. So these, I just cut them off and get rid of them. God, these are sticky, these are disgusting. Don't know what they use to put them on, don't wanna know. I will not be using this brake lever. I think I'm gonna use some Dicomp Tech 77 locking levers on this because I really like those. So that comes off. So make sure you get all the stuff off that you can before you bring it to your powder coater. This one came with a nice dyno stem. It's polished. I could certainly use a new polish on it. Everything seems to be in really good shape on it though. Nobody beat it up too bad. Um, I could probably spend 20, 30 minutes cleaning this up and it would look amazing. Uh, just needs probably some new hardware on it. And that's about it. This is a pretty nice stem. Uh, you could use this on another build if you want. I seem to have quite a few of these, so you could also just sell them. Uh, people like to use these and have these. They do pretty well. Um, I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a collector, so I try not to hang on to all these parts. Most things I try to get rid of uh, because I have found that I just start hoarding parts and then I have parts everywhere and I just don't have the room for it, to be perfectly honest with you. So I try to keep my stuff fairly basic, maybe a few extra things here or there, uh, but for the most part, I just hang on to what I need for that particular build. This stem I don't need, so uh, I may sell it as is, but you know, spending 20, 30 minutes cleaning something up uh, could get you double what you're asking if it's just grimy and dirty. Some people do pretty well selling grimy, dirty things. That's just not me. I'd rather you get a product uh, that's clean, working, and that you can see what you're getting instead of something covered in dirt, cobwebs, uh, debris, whatever. Uh, it's just kind of lazy. Uh, if that's what you do, that's fine. I'm sure they sell, but you can probably get a little bit more money if you just spend a little bit more time and a little bit more work and uh, stop taking the easy way out. So we take the stem apart. You can see it's pretty nice. It's in pretty decent shape. Uh, didn't feel like any of the threads are in bad shape either, but I always try to replace the uh, bolts inside of it because they're not hard to get. They're pretty easy to find, and it just looks so much nicer when you have nice new bolts in there and not ones that you can tell are old or used. It just gives this a new reconditioned look that uh, will be real nice on someone else's build. So if I do decide to sell this, I'll put it on Instagram. So make sure you're following the Instagram page. I, usually I list everything that I'm selling on there first. Last up, we have the seat and seat post that came on this bike. And of course, we're gonna take the seat off. A little earlier, we kind of went over the condition of the seat. And when you use wrenches to take seats off, make sure you're using the right size. 14 millimeter is usually the right size. And try not to break the seat. Just take your time and be patient taking these seats off. Just loosen it up a bit comes right off and then there's your seat GT Viscount I believe it was a 2188 and uh, great seat great condition we're just gonna file this a little bit make it a lot smoother and uh, restore it a bit and this spike will look fantastic the seat will look almost brand new the seat post it's in great shape. I don't see anything wrong with it. All the right markings. It does have a circle stamp GT on there. I know you're really not gonna be able to see it too well, but there it is.
another beautiful day in Newport Beach. We're on our way to the powder coaters to get the frame and all the components powder coated. It's not a far drive, about 10 minutes up the coast, and then they're a bit inland, um, about a mile or two from the ocean. I'm about a block and a half from the ocean where I live, so it's beautiful. It's about 72 degrees, and we're in the middle of October. So you can't beat the beach weather here. It's pretty fantastic. Lots of palm trees, a little bit of traffic, because someone up there doesn't know how to drive. But all in all, beautiful day. We're on our way to the powder coater, get this stuff dropped off. My turnaround is usually three to five days, unless they're really busy closer to the five days. Uh, but it seems to be pretty quick. Today's a Monday. I expect to have it back by the end of the week. So we'll get there and we'll find out what they have to say. Fresh powder, fresh decals. Let me get all the parts out. We'll lay them on the table here, kind of mock it up a little bit. And then we're gonna go over the build process for this GT Performer with 89 Performer Tribal decals. So let me go get those things together and I'll be right back. Now that I have everything set out, let's take a look at some of the parts we're gonna go into this build. First, the GT Tomahawks with GT tires and we'll start with the pro comp bulldog brakes amy grips tech 77 locking levers the original gt seat a black headset powder coated gyro which i have a decal for gt mallet stem GT dice valve stem caps gloss black GT three piece power series cranks powder coated tough neck chain ring and a chop saw pork chop um, power disc with the crazy colored Royal Enfield chain ring bolts and we got some Odyssey twisted pedals we got the bottom bracket in black, gyro cables, front brake cable. Hiding back here is the seat post clamp from Odyssey. And that is the majority of the parts that I'm gonna use on this build. So you can kind of get a, an idea of what it's going to look like. What I like to do is I lay everything out on the table get a, an idea of what I'm looking for in my build and see if it looks like how I envisioned it in my head. This is a good time to add some accent colors. Uh, if you want to get a good idea of, hey, maybe I want to add some purples, blues, greens, whatever you want to add to your build, this is a good time to do it instead of putting the bike all the way together and then realizing, man, I probably should have done something else. But that happens sometimes anyway, and sometimes you need to have the bike together to see it complete before you make a final decision on how you want it to look when it's done. But obviously I'm going for a lavender purple and black look and I'm going to add a few small accent colors to bring out maybe some of the pinks in the logo and that's going to be about it. So let me start getting some of these parts together. We'll get you set up and we'll do a build on this bike. Like to use accented colors like the black bearing cups and you can see I put the gyro logo on there 
and got the gyro in place. Just need to add the cables. Got the GT mallet stem on there, and that's looking pretty good. And then I went ahead and mounted the black bearing cups into the bottom bracket. Next thing up will be the cranks, the rest of the bearing cups. And uh, from there, I might be ready to move into wheels, but I got to make sure that I have some 20 inch um, tubes for them because I don't know if I do or not. I'm going to have to check some of my uh, boxes and see if I got extra tubes. If not, we'll have to make a quick run to the store and grab those. Not a big deal, but the build's going pretty smooth. Uh, all the caps went in really well, nice and easy. Uh, used some really good bearing grease. I notice a lot of you in your builds, the different types of grease you're using. As long as you're using grease, that's fine. Uh, but what I'm currently using is Crystal, and this is a clear bearing grease. And I like to use enough to just make sure every surface that that bearing is going to be on is adequately covered. I see a lot of you add a whole lot of grease in there. And honestly, I don't recommend that. If you've ever pulled a bike apart uh, where somebody had done that, it's a complete mess. And if they sit for a long time, that becomes almost a gelatin. And I don't recommend that. Uh, but this is a great product, and I'm going to go ahead and link that down below in this video if you want to go ahead and check that out. But that's where we're at right now with the headset, gyro, and stem. And then I'm going to go ahead and start working on the bottom bracket so we can get these beautiful cranks and chain ring in. So... I'll be back in a moment and we will see how that is going and see if we can get this all put together. Just to make sure that attention to detail is adhered to, I always line up the valve stem with the logo on the tire when I'm using a tire like a Comp 3 that has a significant logo on the side or the GT in this case. Uh, you'll see I line the valve stem cap up uh, with the GT logo and I just think little details like that make a difference so when you're building a bike take the time make sure your grips are straight up and down logos are visible people love to see the logo and if everything's different you know you have two of the same grip but positioned differently on the bike it's gonna look a little off uh, same with tires so if you have a logo and it's one of them's lined up with a valve stem and the other one's off by four inches some people might notice that especially if you got some OCD but more importantly it looks like you took the time and made this thing making every single detail count so like I promised we're gonna get these wheels on and then we'll get started on the brake cables and then the chain here's a quick look at the brake cables they are um, not original gyro cables but Finding original gyro cables, new old stock in black is nearly impossible. So that's what we have to work with. So let's go ahead and get them on the bike. So you kind of get an overall feel for what it's starting to look like. And I decided to add a little pink for a donut there to bring out some of the pink on the bike. And I've included a blue, you can probably see it better here. Uh, brake cable which really picks up the blue in the tribal logo added a rad BMX builds bar pad and pads are for sale in black right now whole pad sets and we will go ahead and put the brake cables on and finish up the brake system uh, after we do the wheels and that will be the last thing we'll be able to do until the chain comes in so we're gonna head out to the store real quick. I seem to have run out of my tubes and pick up a few and go ahead and put them on this, so we'll be back. Just completed the cable install for the gyro for front and rear brake. Let's take a look and see what we got. On the front brake, I decided to use the blue brake cable that I showed you earlier because I think it ties in nicely with the decal, as you can see there, the blue. And the gyro's all wired up. You can see the rear and front cables. The front cable that came on this kit is extremely short, so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I find that more often than not. 
and then the blue cable going into the front brake lever as you can see there so if you follow the brake cable down the cable goes into a cable guide which is fantastic that it has and I brought it up through the frame down around to the rear brake so overall installation went really well on that it wasn't too bad and uh, now we're on to putting the last thing on there which is what I talked about and that's the chain and I'm happy it showed up today so we can finish this build finish this video and uh, see what the bike looks like complete out in the sun for a photo shoot so let me grab the chain and we'll throw that on and then we'll do a review of the bike build And there it is, the completed GT Performer with 89 tribal decals. I hope you enjoyed this build, and if you'd like to see more of them, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications. Let me know what you think in the comments, and stay tuned next week for more videos. Stay rad.